welcome everyone to our Davenport Dialogue series. We are really excited to welcome Ken Fortier, who is um, a graduate of the class of 2001, and he is currently the Vice President of Business Development at Highland. Uh, Ken is also our co-chair of our Alumni Board of Directors here at Davenport. Um, and he is going to be presenting on the art of authentic relationships. So Ken, we're really excited to have you. Ken, thank you so much for joining us. We are excited for this presentation. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity. Thanks, Whitney. <clears throat> I really do. Thank you. So uh, I do have just a few slides to share today, and I, I do want this to be interactive if possible. I know some of you are probably eating lunch or maybe you're just kind of playing this in the background which um, I understand. But today I really am planning on giving you some nuggets and some, some information that you can take away and apply immediately by the end of my presentation today. And you know, I also wanna encourage you to speak up. I'm gonna ask a few questions and you're welcome to, to engage. Um, of course, Eric and Whitney, you're also welcome. I, I see there's a few of my teammates from Highland that jumped down, which is awesome. And I'm really glad you guys are here. So without further ado, I'm just gonna kind of get started and just kind of share with you just a short, presentation around the, the art of authentic connection. See, I think that connections aren't, aren't necessarily a science to this. I think it's something we have to work at. It's something we have to think about. So I kind of want to take you through a few things today. And part of the agenda is just to share why these connections matter. I mean, even this conversation, why is this important? Being known as a big idea. And then there's three questions that I'm going to leave you with today that you can apply and, and take out into the world. And you can share these questions with your family, with your friends, if you're getting interviewed, I think it's great an interview process. Or if you're in sales, this will be something you can actually leverage. This is something I think you can actually leverage in your day to day. So, first, my question for you all to be is, what what do connections even look like? You know, when you when you hear the word connections, what do you think about? You know, do you think about people in a networking room? Do you think about people trying to um, sell you something? Do you think about these? Zoom calls where we, we say we're connecting, but we're really not actually connecting. This is really like the second time I've ever done this presentation virtually like this. Uh, I would say it's, it's very challenging to do that because I, I like to engage with the audience. It's really important to me to do that, to do that. But I, I, I wanna make sure that today I just do my best to, to help you through this process of understanding. Because I want you to think about connections as fun. You know, these are my twin nine-year-olds. You know, the connections, process can really be fulfilling and rewarding for you. And I want you to feel like that's what you're learning about today or, or sharing, you know, comrades coming together to solve a problem, just the, this camaraderie of pulling together in mastermind groups and the way we used to connect pre-COVID out, you know, having drinks or lunch or breakfast or coffee and getting together and helping each other solve problems. And this, you know, so we all say that spending time with family is important and it's important to be connected to the people that we're closest to. And yet, when we do have that time with our friends and our family, I just wonder, you know, how present are we with them? You know, I know there's been times where I could be in the car traveling with my wife and she might be caught up in, a, in some kind of string of Instagram or Pinterest or whatever. And we can go 30 minutes without saying a word to each other. And we're sitting just a few feet apart from each other. So I, you know, I know this is important, and, but I, I do think this is something that we should talk about because work is important. I get that. And we've all got goals and financial responsibilities that we need to accomplish. Those are all really important. But I have yet to meet someone on their deathbed yearning for a few more hours of work, right? And if we measure in our lives, you know, the time that we spend with family, do we really take it seriously? Are we really shutting down and our phones and sitting there and being present for those around us? So I guess here's my first question. I'd, I'd love to hear some feedback. You know, how good are we at really at connecting today? And is this you being present? So if you think about it, you know, maybe someone might want to share a personal experience or something where they've started to notice that even when they're at lunch or dinner with their friends, that it's almost acceptable to be on our phones and not present. Or even in a sales meeting, I've actually seen, you know, someone take a call and ask me if it was okay while I'm sharing some really important information with them. It's almost like it's a, an understanding that it's okay not to be present. I just wonder, are, are any of you feeling that today or seeing that in your lives? 
Jan, J. Pa. Ken, it seems like our mobile phones are the new cigarette. You look back at the movies and there was always this elegant woman who may be by herself in the restaurant, but it was okay because she was smoking a cigarette. And that became the social cushion, the, the social safety net. And now you don't see anyone sitting alone in a restaurant or a cafe that doesn't have their phone in front of them. And uh, I've challenged myself, you know, I've, I'll get on shuttles and things like that. And I've challenged myself not to touch my phone and see if I can actually interact with people. It's interesting. No, I, I like, I love hearing that. Thank you for your feedback, JP. I really appreciate that. Would anyone else agree with him on that? Have they seen that? Okay. So go ahead. Are you going to say something, Eric? Oh, no, you just pop back on. I'm sorry. I, no, see I was like going to say, no, I, I 100% agree. And it's weird to see where, I mean, even in airports and restaurants and bus stops and everybody's got their head down. So it's, it's interesting. Uh, how important our phone is to in daily life. Yeah, right. What would we do without it, right? We can't even go a day without it, right? So just to share a couple of statistics, um, there was a book that was published by Robert Putnam. I don't know if you know, he's a famous author. He did this extensive research on uh, connections, relationships, and this, this, this was a pre-COVID, right? Um, and when the book was published, what he learned over those 25 years that he was seeing this drop, like 30%, 35% drop in the amount of time people's friends are spending with each other. There was a 43% fewer family dinners happening at that time. And there was a 58% drop in like club meetings, country clubs, that kind of thing. And what's interesting about that book is it was published 20 years ago. Remarkable, right? And those, those statistics were there. So I guess, Mike, again, my next question to the group is, do you think it's any better today? I mean, are we spending more time joining things? Are we spending more time and family meals together? Or do you think, and if, and if we're not doing it today, what's, what's wrong, right? What's keeping us from that? Um. <clears throat> yeah, to answer that question, uh, my personal belief would be that the quality has gone down, but the quantity has gone up. It's a lot easier to reach out to people these days due to the uh, technological advances of the 21st century. But are we really getting to go um, past the surface level of meeting people? I don't think that it is as easy as it used to be or as common. It's not as easy? No, I would say that it's not. That's interesting feedback. I, I, I agree. I, you know, it's, I love that answer. Or I love that response because I typically I hear the reason why it's not happening is because of technology. Like this blanket answer. Technology is the problem. Technology keeps us from spending more time together. And I just think that's a cop out. Right. I think that what you just shared with us there, Cam, was was a really great, really great feedback to what I think is happening. So. Sorry, my screen is frozen for some reason. Bear with me here. There we go. So let me share another, another piece of information here. So this is a information, it's, it's a little older, but it still it makes a point that Americans have never been less likely to be friends with their neighbors than before. And in 1974, 44% of respondents said that they had spent a social evening with their neighbors more than once a month. And by 2008, that number had dropped to a tick just over 30%. So now the people that live next door to us, even, even now are not, we're not connecting to them and they live right next door. You know, it's so easy for us to, to get home, hit that clicker on the garage door opener, the door opens, maybe our neighbor's standing outside, maybe we wave, but we drive in and we close the door behind us and we go watch Survivor or whatever, The Bachelor or whatever's the, the latest show, right? You know, it, it's remarkable to me in that. In fact, when I, when I, I keep referring back to my wife, but when I first got married and my wife and I came together, I actually, I moved into her home. She'd lived here for eight years and didn't really have close connections with her neighbors. And so I, I made it a point to get to know them. I, I knew that we would need our neighbors at some point, or maybe they would need us. 
I just thought that was important. We probably should know the names of the people that live right next door, maybe a cell phone number. Who knows? This is crazy, right? But, you know, doing that was interesting. And, and I can follow up with that later on another point. But the, the idea with me doing that what was really nice is that when my birthday came, they brought me food and gifts and juice. And it's like my wife, because I've lived here eight years, nobody's brought me anything. You know, and it, she just thought that was that was interesting. But I, I think that's important. Because whether we understand this is happening to us, I think we, we're missing that these days. I, I think one idea here is that we have opportunities to connect every single day and we just don't see it. We're not paying attention to it. It's not important to us. Frankly, with these masks on, we don't even say hi anymore to each other. I know I know when I have to go to places with a mask on and I say hi to someone, they think it's just okay to ignore me. It's just, it's not Midwest nice that I'm used to, but it's happening. Uh, these types of situations, even on an airplane now, we're still in masks, flown lately. Um, it's remarkable to me, even now, even wearing masks. Uh, one of my favorite stories is I gave this presentation to a large group, a big, big team, and I asked the question, has anybody flown lately? And this gentleman said he had flown recently. And I was like, where were you flying to? He says, I was so excited. It was December. I was getting out of Michigan. I was flying down to Florida to spend some time with my parents. I was super excited. I got on the plane. I sat next to this nice little old lady who was reading a book. And I said, hi, how are you to her? And she says, sir, the man in this book is way more attractive than you are. And just did not want to talk. And he said, I felt just shut down, right? You know, I think it's, it's sad. And that it was pre-COVID days. Even now, I mean, if any of you flown lately, I, I wonder, do you even think about having any kind of conversation with the person sitting right next to you? I think it's probably more challenging than it's ever been. So recognizing those opportunities, whether we're standing in line or whether we're, you know, at the store, I, I have a friend that's read, that reads a lot of books and he stands in these grocery lines and he says he's always reading his book because that's more important than even saying hello to anybody around him. He does self-checkout, so he doesn't even have to speak with the cashier. You know, he's a little bit introverted, and, and that's okay, but I still think that there's something that we should be thinking about, and I'm taking you to a, to a big idea. So here's another question. I hope I can get some feedback from the group, but do, if you think about it, do you think there's a difference between networking and actually making connections, if you think about it? And, and I would really be curious to hear any feedback. So there's no difference between networking and making connections. You know, this, the Zoom technology is tough. You know, people don't have to participate, which I love that. But that's why I love doing these things in person, because I can stare someone down or call a name and get some feedback. That's what I mean. I'm going to ask you, Eric, just because I see you. Do you think there's a difference between networking and making connections? Uh, I do. Yes. Um, I mean, networking, I, sometimes I feel has a, 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 maybe a defined outcome where net, making connections can happen anywhere. Um, you know, in a grocery store, waiting for a bus at a bus stop. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's there's multiple ways of making connections. When I think of networking, I'm thinking in a big group, a commonality uh, mindset of maybe a background or same outcome. But whereas making connections you know, can happen at daycare, can happen while you're crossing the streets. You know, yeah. Like that. So so it's so there's that sense of it, right? Where you just different environments different types of connections well i think i think that the the bigger idea here is when connections begin when you get to know someone i think that's the difference between networking and making connections i think making connections and the big idea here that i want to one idea that, that i want to help your mindset on the idea of connections before i give you some information that you can take away with you today is that I think to know others and to be known is one of our most fundamental needs as human beings. And that's, a, that's the big idea. And being known just doesn't mean your name or your occupation. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about actually being known as a human being and knowing others. And, and if you don't believe me, let me just give you a couple of examples. So I'm, I'm gonna ask a question. I'm sure I'd see a show of hands. How many of you know or are around small children, right? I'm sure a lot of you are around small children. And what do we know about small children? We know that they like to be held. We know they like to be read to. Um, small children have this, this 
energy around them that they just want to share things, right? I know that when my kids get home from school, Ellie's, as she comes through the door, she's like, daddy, let me tell you what happened on the playground today. And this boy was staring at me and, you know, this little girl said this to me and she just wants to share everything that's going on and everything that happened to her in the day. And, and it's, it's wonderful and it's beautiful, but sometimes I'll be, Ellie, you know, I think mommy wants to hear about your day too, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's this like, it's this energy that they have. They want to share everything about themselves. You know, they, they just haven't been damaged yet by society that maybe people just don't necessarily want to hear all about your day, <laughs> right? We had, I had my own day. I don't really need to hear about your day. But with children, it's, there's just that free freedom, right? So stay with me on that thought. So at the other end of the spectrum, I'm curious to hear, and I'll give you like 10 seconds. If anybody has been in a nursing home lately or visited a nursing home lately, I'd be really curious to hear if anybody would be willing to share an experience, what, what they saw in a nursing home recently, if they've been to one or visited one. Do we have family? Go ahead, Whitney. And yeah, I actually worked at a nursing home for many, many years. Um, and I can tell you that those who are at a nursing home that have family that visit regularly, um, they are what you would assume happier, uh, a little more active, a little bit healthier. Those that unfortunately don't have anyone visiting them, it's exactly what you would expect it's it's uh sad it's it's hard and there's only so much time that some of the staff has have as well so right so it's not it's not some place you're you hope to go to someday right Correct. Yep. yeah we don't right and and I, I used to visit my my next door neighbor years ago at a nursing home close by and um you know he had a big family but I I'd visit him on, on Mondays or Tuesdays and I'd be around seven o'clock. He was almost always sleeping. His food was almost never touched, just laying there in the tray, you know? And I'd wake him up and he'd kind of sit up and he was always happy to see me. But it wasn't until I started asking him, you know, like, how, you know, how's it going? And, tell, and he, he would just reminisce about the days when we'd cut the grass and sit on the yard and have a beer together. Or he'd give my kids ride in the back of his lawnmower in the, in the, in the trailer and, he would just, you know, and he always ended the same way, Ken, take me home. You know, he didn't want to be there. And I, it, it just killed my, you know, for that, right? So, so here's the question I have for you. When you think about connections and really taking care and getting to know others and to be known, why is it that somewhere between our teenage years, that need just goes away only to reappear as we're starting you know, as, as, as our years start to end. I mean, do you think that desire to share those stories, to, to be curious about others just goes away? And, and I'm going to propose it doesn't. I think that we just don't think it's that important. I don't think we give it the attention that it needs to really take the time to get to know others. Um, I don't think that we care as much as we used to. I think we're just indifferent to that and we're being pulled away by uh, uh, social media and other things that are just more important than getting to know the person sitting right next to you. Um, but I do think that it's important that we just are aware that that desire by others is still there. And that today I'm gonna give you an opportunity to maybe open up that conversation because I think it's difficult for us to figure out how to do that. So before I give you those three questions, Laura, did you wanna say share anything? I was just going to say, I think when I talk to people, people actually love talking about themselves. I mean, so I'm, I like small talk with people because I just ask them all kinds of questions about themselves yeah. <laughs> and you find out so much. I mean, if you just, sometimes you have to be the initiator and just keep those questions going. And then I try to remember those things so that next time I see them, I can go back to the questions I asked as a follow-up. Oh, you know, oh, did you take that trip? Or how are your kids doing? Or things like that. Because I think all of us love, I mean, love to talk about ourselves, really. We do. We think about do. It. Yeah, and it's really great, Laura. I, I love that. I think that's, it's, it's good that you have that interest, right? That desire. Sometimes I find it challenging when people ask me a lot about myself and I share. And then I'm like, well, tell me a little bit about you. They're like, oh, no. That's just boring. 
and they don't want to share of themselves, oh, right? Yeah, so yeah. now they're being selfish, thinking that that's not something I want when I when I really do want to know, mm-hmm. like I really do want to hear. But yeah. I love that. And then even remembering those little stories and coming back and going back to those stories. It's, yeah. it's just, I think it's, it's something we all could work on. We all could do a little better at, right? Mm-hmm. So what I'm going to ask you to think about before I give you these questions is, is something I, I like to call conversational judo. So judo is a martial art, but unlike other martial arts, judo takes a person's energy, their momentum, and kind of directs them in a, in a certain way. That's how judo works. So with conversational judo, the way I like to think about it, it's you're taking your experience, you're taking your knowledge, you're taking your care, your interest, your curiosity, and you're leveraging that skill and energy to take someone else where you kind of want them to go, right? Where you want them to go in the conversation. So there's ways you can direct people. And I'm not talking about you know, conquering someone or beating, you know, beating someone or taking someone out. This is more about just using that energy to invite them into more of a connection with you. And I think that's something that I'm going to give you today. And you can use, again, I think you can use these questions that I'm going to share with you in lots of areas. I think you can use them in your personal life when you ask and you want to get to know someone. I think it's a way to open up the conversation and a sales opportunity I think it's way underused in an interview process because I think when we're getting interviewed or we're interviewing others, sometimes we're afraid to get into those questions that might take us down a path that's personal. And I'm not talking about getting in trouble from an HR perspective. What I'm just talking about is taking actual interest in the person that's sitting across the table from you. So one of the questions I would ask you to to write down to remember when you're meeting someone for the first time, whether you've known someone for 20 years, asking this question is, is the start in opening up dialogue. I, I'll tell you every single meeting I have, whether it's with my team, uh, whether it's with a new opportunity, a future client, my existing clients that we, that we meet with regularly, friends, centers of influence that I sit down and get together with monthly or, or bi-weekly, some of them. I'm always curious to hear what they're trying to accomplish. And that question, I want it to stay open. It's not about what's your goal for the year. It's not about what are you trying to accomplish in business? Why I ask this question is I'm sincerely curious what they're trying to accomplish personally, professionally, whatever's top of mind for them right now. So a great example, I've got several, but I'll share one with you. Um, I, I know that when I was starting this business called Net Plus Connections, it was around development and training for professionals on how to help them engage with others more authentically. And I was sitting down with a gentleman who was the managing partner of a large firm. And I asked him, you know, is it okay if I ask you a few questions? He says, of course. I asked him what was something he was trying to accomplish over the next 12 months. His immediate response to me was help my son get a job. My son graduated. He's had four interviews. This was 2013. He says, Ken, I just don't know what's going on. I need help. I don't, I, I'd love for someone to help my son and give him a job. So I asked this gentleman to introduce me to his son. You know, I really appreciated the feedback. Our conversation ended. I followed up with an email and I said, listen, I'll make some time. I'll have lunch with your son. If he reaches out to me, I'll sit down with him. And I got to know his son. His name was Brad, great guy. Got to know him really well, still friends with him today. And just gave him an hour of time, giving him ideas and coaching on how he could get a job. I made a couple of introductions for him. He ended up landing this really great opportunity. His dad never forgot it. We still talk about it today. You know, it's just that one question led to something really important and it led to a lasting connection and a really great friendship, which, you know, really I appreciate today. So that's just one example. A great follow-up question when you're talking with someone about what they're trying to accomplish, what's most important to them is what's going well for you right now. You know, it's a, it's a soft, <laughs> I call it a soft softball because it's, hey, what's going great? What's going well? You know, you can ask it any way that you're comfortable with. But the way I ask it is what's, I ask it exactly like this. What's going well for you right now? And, you know, sometimes people think about what they want to share with you, with you especially if it's a new connection and it's somebody you're just meeting. Um, I know there's a couple on my team that are young in their 20s. And I know that when they're out, you know, in networks, singles, events or whatever, if they're out club or something that Sometimes this is a question they use, you know, what's going well for you right now? And let people share something that's really positive for them. 
The one example I like to share for myself um, when I asked this question, when I asked a gentleman who I just met, he shared with me that that afternoon he was going to meet his brother and his nephew for his nephew's sixth birthday. And they were so excited, boys afternoon out, going to dinner. I, I was like, that sounds like so much fun. I said, I'm really excited for you guys. I said, where, where are you guys going for dinner? And he said, oh, we're going to the Uccellos. I'm like, which Uccellos? He said, the one on, on uh, the belt line. I said, oh, I'm familiar with that place. You guys should have a great time. So I actually left the meeting. I called you cellos. And I just asked that, you know, I, I shared that there's two guys coming in around six o'clock with the five-year-old for the birthday party thing, just three men getting out. And I asked if I could buy their appetizers in the first round of drinks. Real simple thing. The lady was really happy to do it. I gave her my credit card. All I wanted to do was just to add a little bit to that experience for them. And Tony is the gentleman. He's, we're still friends today. I mean, he's such a nice guy and we're still connected today. But it's a story that, you know, would never have happened if he wasn't willing to be open and share that that fun event that was happening for him that night. And then the last question I have before we before we get into we're doing great on time. In fact, I'm gonna, I promise you, I'll let we're all going to be done here early. But the last question is the most challenging question. Sometimes people find it really hard to ask this question. Um, I'm going to say timing matters with this question when you say what's not going well for you. Because if you really do want someone to be authentic with you, they have to believe that when, when you asked those two questions earlier, that you were listening, that you were present, that you weren't checking your phone in any way, um, that you were fully engaged in the conversation. I think it's really important when you ask somebody what's not going well for you, that you be ready for whatever it is they give you. So my favorite story, which I'm sure some of you have heard before, is um, when I owned, I used to own a telecommunications company and we, uh, my, one of my sales people got a meeting with this gentleman. We've been trying to get this meeting. He's a CIO of this really big manufacturing company. Really needed the meeting. My salesperson got the meeting. We were gonna meet this guy out at Blue Water Grill, which is his, his favorite place. And as we're walking in, you know, we sell phone systems for a living at that time. It's not very cool, uh, but that's something that we did. Um, and I said to my sales guy, don't talk about phone systems. Let me just ask a few questions. Let's just get to know him. And let's just see how the meeting goes. So we're sitting down and we're probably halfway through the meeting, just a lot of small talk. And I said to him, I said, so, you know, can I ask you a few, questions, a few more questions? He says, sure, Ken, Ken what, whatever, you, what, what do you want to know? And I said, I'm just curious one thing you're trying to accomplish, you know, say over the next 12 months. Without and he says to drink more great beers like this. And he sips his beer and sets it down. And that's all he said. He was serious, you know, he was a little bit eccentric, but you know, I was, I was, I giggled, you know, whatever, you just kind of go along with it, right? The next question I asked him was what was going well for you? And he said, honestly, Ken, knowing that you're buying my beer today makes me really happy. And that's going really well for me today. So when I got to the third question, as we're paying the check and everything was wrapping up, I just said, what's not going well for you? And he said, without even, without even a beat, he says, you know, my riding lawnmower is broke. It's been broke for two weeks. Um, I'm, it's Friday afternoon. He says, I've got to go home. My wife's not happy with me. My grass is this high. I got two young boys that are playing army man in the front yard. They think it's so cool that our grass is so long. He says, it's just really been a problem. And I just, I dread going home because I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this thing. It's so frustrating. I can't get it working. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, smart guy, successful. Um, I said, why don't you just take it and get it fixed? Right. And he's like, I don't have a trailer. I just don't, I haven't had time. It's just, He's like, I'm just so frustrated. I said, well, I said, well, I have a trailer. I go to Riley's on Michigan Street because they're the best small engine repair shop that I know of. I said, let me help you. Let me, let me come get that mower for you, from you tomorrow. I'm happy to drop it off for you. They'll do a great job for you. And then you won't have to worry about it. And it'll probably take a few days to fix it. And then we'll get it back to you and you can cut your grass. He goes, well, that's, that's interesting. You'd really want to come over to my house? He's like, we just met. It's so strange. And I was like, no, no. I really, I'm really interested in doing that. So, so he gives me his address, you know, he says, I'm going to, I'm not going to be home tomorrow morning. he said, when are you coming? I said, 10 o'clock. He says, I'm not going to be there, but um, I'll put it on the driveway and you can just take it. I said, great, great. He said, I got soccer games, with my boys, I'm going to be busy. So, okay. So I show up at 10 AM. I pull into his driveway. He's got this old junky simplicity lawnmower. I don't know if you've seen a simplicity, but it's just, I don't even know if they make them anymore. So I'm thinking, why isn't he just buying a new one, right? So I'm backing up my trailer. And as I'm starting to push the mower into the back of my trailer, he comes walking out of the garage. 
And he's like, Ken, um, I can't believe you came. I was like, well, I said I'd be here. You know, he's like, so he's, he's helped me push the mower and he looks me in the eye and he says, he goes, I, you know, I meet you yesterday. He's like, are you going to steal it? Are you going to steal my mower? I said, no, I'm not going to steal your mower. He goes, I don't really know you that well. And you're, he goes, I just, I appreciate this, but this just feels kind of weird to me, letting someone help me like this. So I just told him how grateful I was and how I appreciated it, that you let me give him a hand. You know, this, is, this was actually really fun for me. So I take the mower. He actually calls me on the way while I'm driving away. And he says, hey, um, hate to ask this, but do you mind if they fix the belts, change the oil and all this? And I go, of course, of course, I'll put in the whole thing for you, you know? So a week later, I pick up the mower, I go back to, to his place. And as I'm driving, he drives the mower off the back of my trailer. He cuts two paths of hay. Literally, it's like hay in the backyard. And he's like, Ken, come sit with me on my deck. He goes, meet my wife and my kids, have a beer with me. I just can't tell you how much I appreciate that you did this for me. And I just can't, I just, I mean, it means so much to me. He's like, my neighbors haven't been this nice to me. He's like, is everybody at your company, are they like this? I said, well, I, I'd like to think so. You know, I said, I, yes, I'd like to help you with your business. And there's a lot we can do to help you with your company. But I mean, I also want you to know that we want to help you with other things too. It's just bigger than what we do. It's, I want to be worth more than I cost to you, right? And what a way to live, right? So since that day, um, he is, his, his company has invested over a million dollars in the company that I sold. Um, there's still clients today, I, and I meet with him, let's say a couple times a year, and just to reminisce and have beers, and we're still connected to this, this, this young man, and nice guy, but I just... It's not, it wasn't about the money necessarily, but the result from that exchange turned into something much bigger than I could have ever expected. So, so what I want to just share with you about these three questions before we do some breakouts here, because I'd love to have you, I'd like to have us go into breakouts and maybe ask each other these three questions and just see what we can learn from each other. Even if we know each other in the, in the breakout room, I think that there's an opportunity here to maybe connect in a different way. One thing I want you to know about these questions though, that it's important that you just, you, when you meet with somebody, you don't just blurt out these questions, right? It would sound really creepy if you're always asking somebody what they're trying to accomplish, right? But if you start with establishing some rapport, you know, I think you should take your time to get to know the person a little bit first, and then maybe you can ask permission to ask a question or two. And then you can also look for that moment when the conversation shifts. It, it always helps to ask permission before you ask the question, okay? So what I'd like to do with, if you don't mind, is, is break us up into groups. Hopefully you guys remember the three questions. You don't have to get through all the three, but I just want to encourage you to ask one, two, or three of the questions of the others in the room and try to make sure you at least listen and learn one thing, and then we'll come back and circle back and wrap up the meeting. Okay? So Whitney, if you don't mind, could you break uh, us up? I am setting up the rooms now. Everybody's back. All right, so here's the, here's the tough one now. I'm gonna ask one last question and then we can wrap. Is there anything that you learned that either A, you didn't know, maybe the person you knew, or B, something you could actually do to help someone else? Um, is there anything like that that happened in that breakout? And just so you know, there always is. So if, if nobody says anything, then I, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something that comes out of that dialogue. I know Cody and I got to talk a little bit and there might be opportunities for us to help each other with something. So that was good. Um, but it'd be great if somebody else had a story to share. I'll go ahead, Ken. Thanks, Nate. Um, so, you know, Laura and I, I don't know if I have the answer to what she's, uh, you know, having trouble with, because it's the same thing that I'm having trouble with. But, you know, at least we did find some commonality in the fact that, uh, you know, we're still both just having the challenge with finding enough time in the day. And it's not just for work things, but, you know, family things, uh, family commitments. And uh, I think that's pretty common these days. And, um, I don't know if anybody has an answer to it, but it's at least nice to know that, uh, yeah. you know, other people are in the same boat. No, I, that's, that's, that's great to share. Right. And, 
so just to kind of build on that, if there was one, if there was one thing that you liked best about what you heard today or of, of anything, what would be the one thing that you're going to take away? Would you say? I'm still on the spot. <laughs> okay. Am I? Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's just having the awareness to know that, uh, you know, not everybody is used to being out in a social situation right yeah. right now, right? We're all kind of learning, relearning how to do this. Um, so you, it's probably better to have some strategies to make those first steps because, you know, the other person sitting across from you at coffee might not know how to start the conversation, right? Or how to actually have it be meaningful. No, it's really great feedback. Thank, thank you, Nate. No, it's really helpful. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and, I, and I'm open to having coffee virtually or preferably in person or lunch with anyone on the call um, to continue the conversation if you're open to that, if you're interested, we're going to do that. Um, Cam, what'd you like best about today? Yeah, so overall, what I really liked was, you know, just um, getting to practice the questions with other people who are kind of um, thinking the same way, which I think is really interesting. Normally, when you ask these questions, it kind of comes out of left field and people aren't really ready for an answer. So sometimes you don't get as deep as you like to go, but it was really nice when you kind of preface it and you say, hey, can I ask a question? And I got to figure out that uh, within my group, John was actually an alumni from the same high school as me from 1991, oh, no which is just something that I would have never um, been able to explore in the past. And then also on the other end, I was talking uh, I think not going well right now is she needs assistance uh, managing her book and there's not a lot of great talent out there right now I mean the pandemic slowed down that a little bit and so now I'm kind of trying to rack my brain here right now of who is someone who is talented enough that could hopefully assist Rachel in that endeavor um, just through you know five minutes of conversation already looking out to help someone else and then also getting to know someone on a deeper level so that's what I enjoyed Great. Thanks, Cam. Does anybody else want to share something they, they liked best about the day? I like that um, in asking those questions, I found out way more than just what those questions were asking. I found out, you know, Nate was new to the company, that he was in banking before then, that how he's felt about working through COVID and working from home. I mean, there's way more that you find out when just by asking some questions, three things interesting and and my main takeaway is connect making connections more so than networking with people when you meet somebody new finding out those personal tidbits and stuff like that is is what kind of can that's how you make the connection it is and that's the takeaway of the day laura great segue so yes we can ask all these questions yes we can learn from each other yes people will share with us but really at the end of the day it's up to you if you want to do anything about it so now you have information about Rachel or John or Nate, you know, what are you going to do with that information? Are you going to actually follow up with an email? Are you going to connect with them on LinkedIn? Are you going to try to meet up for coffee again? Did, was it a worthwhile connection or not? You know, I mean, a, the idea of getting that information is just one step in a, in a connection. The actual connection doesn't happen until you've actually done something to help that person. John, do you have a statement, something to share? Yeah, I, I really like how your questions, the three questions are what, what we call open probe versus closed probe questions. I think mm -hmm. that um, regardless of the industry work you're in, it's so easy um, before the pandemic and, and coming out of it to just get nervous and ask a question and all of a sudden the person has a yes, no answer and, <laughs> and you really don't get that connectivity. So yeah, this is great. Oh, thank you so much, John. I appreciate you being here too. So that's my challenge for you all uh, to, to, to try this with friends and family. Um, I know that I've got a few of my team that I'm mentoring that actually have done this with their spouses and have literally been enlightened <laughs> by what they learned from their spouses. Mm -hmm. I can't talk about it, but let's just say that it's, was, it was very, very moving and very, very interesting. So please uh, know that you can hesitate, don't hesitate to reach out to me, Ken Fortier, uh, anytime, and I'm happy to, to have lunch or coffee or whatever you guys want to do. So that's all I have for today. I really appreciate your time and listening. I hope, I hope you enjoyed it. And 
Thank you so much. Uh, I have had the privilege of hearing this presentation before. It is just as impactful the second time around. Uh, I really appreciate it. I will stick to our commitment to getting you guys out of here quickly. Just a couple of wrap ups. Um, we do have two more support dialogues on the books. November 10th will be um, uh, the title is Leave No One Behind, Bridging the Digital Divide, and that will be with Bree Ellison out of Verizon. And December 8th, we've got Laying the Groundwork for Growth with Ann Vidro, who is another alum. Um, I've dropped the link in there if you guys are interested in joining any of those. And there will be a follow-up uh, email survey. If you don't mind taking that, we would really appreciate it. Um, and that wraps our first of this semester's Davenport Dialogue. So thank you again, Ken, and thank you everyone for joining us. And Anne is fabulous. Don't miss that one. She's amazing. It'd be great. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you all. Yep. Take care. Thank you.